Okay, I've only got about 10 to 15 minutes left. This is my bad memory card. I'm gonna get that fixed up next, uh, when my next check from Social Security comes in. Okay. Adam, which no longer exists, it will be in the country of Jordan. Comes from a Christian country. The Jewish people will have the same experience the Israelite, as the Israelites of having a prophet in their midst, somebody who can converse with God, friend to friend, face to face. He just takes his power, turns my head, and says, this is why I will be speaking to you today. It can be anywhere in here, but it's almost always about 10 feet up, 10 feet away, maybe 15, up high, uh, and to my right. The Spirit of God is always to my left, like right here. <laughs> Uh, he's he's my best friend. That's who he is. I don't have many. Actually, he may be the only friend I got. So he qualifies. Prophet in the midst, who is the visible representations of the presence of God and the angel of his presence. It's the angel of his presence. Wherever God's presence is, the angel is. And he's the Holy Spirit. Well, wherever God is, again, his spirit is. It all ties together so easy. In Malachi 3, God makes it clear that he knows many will not feed here and revere him, and that many will not even, when he has forgiven the sins of the Jewish people and remembers them no more. Many of the Jewish people do not believe in God, and many do not practice Judaism, and many will not be able to just believe that this is really happening. But God said that's what he's going to do. Jesus told us when he was coming back five different times, five different ways within um, his generation. Well, his generation is gone. You know, when you're born, everybody alive at that moment is your generation. When they're all dead, your generation is over. Okay, you high priest, you shall save me. You members of my twelve, you shall save me for a time. You, the people of, of Caesarea, those amongst you who will be alive when I return. And my favorite, the Revelation, the great the book of Revelation, that's such garbage. Sorry. The seventh verse of the first chapter. And mind you, this guy who's writing it, I think his name's Paul. They don't know if it's the Paul who wrote so much of the New Testament, um, like 60% of it. But uh, it says Jesus is talking to an angel. It's like they get some of these things I'm talking about, and uh, the Jewish, uh, the sages and rabbis never picked up on it. But Jesus, through this uh, spirit or angel, I'm not sure which it was. I can't remember now. I haven't looked at it in quite a while. Um, says, those who pierce me with the spear shall see me return. Well, that's when he was crucified and they stabbed him with spears to make sure he was dead. Well, those people are dead. He didn't come back. They didn't see him return. Caesarea, dead. The disciples, all twelve, dead. The high priest, dead. Generations gone. He's not coming back. However, God says when the land blooms again after desolation, cities restored, Jerusalem rebuilt, I'm coming back. I'm going to make a new covenant. I'm going to put my temple amongst you. This is the covenant of friendship you find in Ezekiel. And uh, you'll never be defeated and dispersed again. You'll no longer be the taunts of nations. The nations will know, will know that I am still with Israel. That's it. That's your messianic era. You know, you don't like it? Tough. That's what it's going to be. Because that's what God says it is. Now you tell me that's the messianic era you hear about. There's no pain. Uh, extraordinarily long lives. Uh, all 
put the world, uh, we'll all be together to worship the God of Israel. Uh, that will be the purpose of mankind. <laughs> it's just, it's just an old fool rambling. That's <laughs> what it is. K. Moshiach, two chapters in the Mishnah told on the laws of K. Moshiach. God calls him my servant David, a shepherd, a teacher, and of course, I teach these books. Anybody wants to get in the school of remembrance that's a rabbi, you're going to have to go to your flock and straighten Judaism out for me, as I'm doing it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, most people out there aren't listening to me. I, I've got a, well 16,000 views uh, the last 28 days, which is great. You know, 750 to 1,000 a day. But that count, that's counting all 50 videos. That's not one video. It's not like some of these other people who are really popular. But, you know, it'll happen. Uh, when, when you go from uh, ashes to riches, there's a journey. And this is a good part of it. And this is the kind of thing I enjoy, a challenge. And if you read my book, you'll see that. <laughs> that my autobiographer, God, dictated. I say, oh, that's good. I like the way you're putting this together. I'm not a writer. I'm not, I wasn't a religious person until God talked to me. Even then, I'm not religious. It's, it's not like we go to a synagogue every day or celebrate Shabbat. By and large, he just has me doing stuff like this. I'm the servant. He says, look, you can't pray to me. You can't worship me. I said, that part you don't have to worry about. I just fire from me. You're not going to get much worship out of me. And I know better than to ask you for anything. Yeah, I don't have self will. He just, I just kind of go along with, you know. They, they'll say something like, uh, "You think you're gonna watch that ball game tomorrow?" I said, "I'll know when I know. I don't need to think about it right now. Either I do or I don't. I shall endure, God." It's kind of how conversations go sometimes. Okay, almost done. Yeah, pit hurry. The amendment in Matthew 3, verse 22. Be mindful of the teaching of my servant Moses, whom I charged and ordered with laws and rules for all Israel, rather than strict compliance. That and the fact that sin forgiveness is hooked into it is the only difference in the original covenant, and it's also why he made sure the remnant, all of the exiles of all 13 tribes came back and as Ezra said they gathered as one man and today that can't happen you can't draw every Jew together and be the man Israel but you can still be a holy seed and whoever works on that temple anything to do with it including raising funds buying property oh and let me add this I only got another paragraph to go The Temple Mount. David took a census and it angered God. And God put him to three tests. He failed. He selected an option that did not work out and was not well. And he went, you know, he told God he was sorry. And for restitution, he went and bought that Temple Mount, that lamb. It was a thresher or something. I don't know what it was. But he went and bought it. That's why... That's why the Temple Mount is so important, and it's really the only reason. You know, just because there was a temple there before doesn't really mean that much. But David did buy it. Well, here's the thing. I'm the, this, I'm the, I'm the twig of the shoot, of the stump of Jesse. Okay? Quite literally, I am on the ancestral tree of King David. I'm a lawyer. I was a lawyer. <laughs> God had me stop practicing the first two weeks. He said, you're not practicing law again. I tell him, I said, what am I going to do about money? He said, you're not going to have any. <laughs> and he kind of laughed. I think it was so funny. No, I haven't practiced law since. I can't practice now. My classes is terminated. They lapsed. Let me finish this up. Oh, yeah. yeah we, you know, power of attorney, stuff like that. You know, we convey this land to Keith Ellis McCarty as... 
uh, power, uh, as agent, attorney, in fact, for his ever buying it. But you get a little bit of David in there. And I'm just a twig anyway. I'm so far removed from David. There's, there's no resemblance. There's no, you know, I'm not going to go out and fight Goliath <laughs> or anything like that. So... The covenant is a metaphor with a degree of hyperbole. God announcing a new, less strict covenant and says that all the Jewish people will heed him for he will forgive their equities and remember their sins no more. This is what you would expect if your God forgives all your sins. That you'll heed him. Okay? But the fact is, in Malachi 3, he says, I know better. But that's just how I wrote it. That's the way it should be. <laughs> that's exactly how he says it. He makes it clear he knows it will not. No more than he believed the Israelites would become a sinless people and, and, and not break the covenant. Not disobey it. They did, but he married them anyway. God knows what people do. He knows why they did it. He's God. Did you know what he said to me one time? He said, he said, Keith, I created emotion. He can change my emotions. He can put me into a despair and depression. It's so awful. And then just left it. I mean, he utter control of me. You know, and they're inside me. I'm just like this, almost like a puppet sometimes. They had me say what they would have me say. But it's always with my personality in mind. I still sound like me. I still may, uh, you know, I forget things just like me. Very forgetful person. <laughs> Very forgetful. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, I'm going to have to put it as two parts. Uh, I still haven't uh, uh, fixed my movie maker. For some reason, it's not taking my videos. These are my video, you know, my memory card. Um, because I normally I would join them. You know, you got 30 minutes and now you got another 10 or so, 40 minutes. But uh, I don't know how hard it is to find a 15 minute video, but uh, I'll check it out someday. But that's how we're, you know, I'm redoing the, he had me re-download and re-upload my 50 videos, which covers 50 uh, chapters of Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord, and a few from the life of God's righteous servant of Moshe of Isaiah 11 and 53. Um, and there's a few on Jesus, uh, none of which are complimentary, <laughs> I assure you. Just to see some of the college Christians come out, they're, they're just a guest. And that's how you're getting. That's how we take God's wrath to them. You got to recognize me and lift me up, which means you got to go study. Now it's great. You, you get my ad libs, and I'm reading from the book. Uh, but sometimes in a quiet place, just reading the book is better for you. And just knowing these are God's new words. He actually did come back. This guy, nobody could know all this. Nobody has ever known it before. How does he just appear? And with the story he's got, he's the only man who could ever satisfy Isaiah 53, 10 and afflicted by God. Jesus wasn't afflicted by, Israel wasn't afflicted by God. And affliction by God in antiquity meant you were born blind, lame, crippled, or disfigured. Now certainly not Jesus Christ. God chose to crush him with disease. We're, okay, they changed the disease to sickness. But what you can't say, change is verse 12 where it says he was exposed to death. So it was a pretty severe sickness. With me, of course, cancer. Um, and familiar with can, cancer comes in earlier. But uh, well, I had skin cancer. It wasn't anything. But the colon cancer was brutal. And lung cancer, I really never felt the effects of it. It's like he put it into my lungs before a time when he knew they were going to x-ray my lungs. And as soon as we went over them and they, they put my file up, he removed it. I mean, I didn't even cough. <laughs> I didn't have trouble breathing, nothing. But now the colon cancer, I suffered like a dog. 
because I didn't have health insurance and I didn't know what it was and it was just a pain in my belly. You know, it had ruptured, I was bleeding internally and for three months until finally I was laying on the floor of this dingy apartment of a friend who traveled dying. I wouldn't go make it another hour or two. I could not get up. I couldn't go for help. I could do nothing. The phone rang. My mom said, Key, turn on the TV. It was the planes hitting New York. And then I saw all these relatives, just how tore up they were at losing loved ones. And it hit me for the first time. This is going to kill my children. You know, we all love each other very much. I said, this is going to kill them. To know that they just came in here and my body was here and I just let myself die. So I called my dad and I said, Dad, you got to pay for a colonoscopy. It's got to be something in my intestines. And it was, an eight-inch tumor. I came out of that colostomy and the doctor says, I couldn't get past this. And he shows me this picture of the intestine with this horrible purple blockage. And I just said, thanks. I said, what does that mean? I didn't know. I was, I've been so naive my whole life. Anyway, that's it for 11. We'll be picking up with 12. And this is a good one, but you got to put your thinking cap on. This is a good one. This is a, a real hit at the New Testament. And it's called Divine Inspiration of Prophecy Fulfilled. Or so they say. <laughs> it's a good one. They're all good. They're all good. Wait till I get to the 53. There's four 53s, chapters on Isaiah 53. There's one where you see Rashi's commentary, verse by verse, all 12 verses, and the three verses of Isaiah 52. We got Toby a singer of Alfred's Judaism in there with his infamous Isaiah 53. Yeah, we're going to publish it. Verse 10, and we got, yeah, Jews for Judaism. They better get busy. You think God, God's going to know when they have heard of this and when it is sufficient for them to look into it. You just tell them God has a sharp, keen eye on them and wants to see how they react, test their belief. He loves testing people, and he likes giving people the business, as we say in Texas. But uh, anyway, that'll be fun to get to. This is going to take two hours to download and upload.